Hi, I'm your host, Vasco Duarte. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Wednesday Leading Change, this week with Alexander Bagidi. Hi, Alex. Welcome back to the show. Hi, Vasco. Happy Wednesday. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Alex, on Wednesdays, of course, we talk about change, and uh, uh, we as Scrum Masters are always working with it, sometimes as leading, sometimes as being part of it, but always dealing with change. could be a, a personal change, a team-level change, an organizational-level change, but we're always dealing with it. So we want to hear a story of a moment, a, a change process you were involved with. So tell us a little bit about the context and then walk us through the process of that change and highlight for us the tools, the tips, the tricks, the techniques you learned back then that you still use today? That's a tough story for me because um, it doesn't end well for me. <laughs> Let's start with that. But it was, a, it, was a, it was a great lesson for me professionally, personally, uh, and, and, and as an agile practitioner and a change agent. I think I had to go through that. I joined a company uh, that was building clean engines. Okay. Um, I joined their PMO. So I was hired by a, a PMO lead, the director for, of the PMO, who was a guy really inspiring, really great guy. And I'm still in touch with him. Awesome guy. Let's call him um, Patrick. I'm not going to give his real name. So Patrick hired me. We really had a connection. Like He was a, a great mentor, a great leader. We were project managers, but a lot of us had some agile background and agile knowledge. Some of us, I would say, not a lot of us. I would say among the 15 project managers that were there, we were maybe three or four who had some agile knowledge and wanted to diversify and not just do waterfall. So Patrick hired me because I had that background in agile and I started you know, working on project in a waterfall way like I used to do. But he put me on data-oriented project, but project where I could bring some agility and where I could ship faster and, and deliver faster earlier and reduce the risk. So I started doing that. Some of the toughest projects he gave it to me. And we found ways with the teams on the project to reduce the complexity and see what can we release now. And really quickly started delivering projects that were stopped and blocked months ago before I arrived in the company. I started making noise in the company. It started to be noticed in the company. But in parallel to that, just my regular project management job, I was also launching a community of practice for Scrum Masters, for Agile practitioners, if, you may, if I may say. Uh, we were doing uh, lunch and learns on Agile with competitions, uh, with Kahoot, so quizzes. Uh, the company is based in Canada, but we also had a, a branch in the US. So I organized like a competition, a, a tournament called the Agile Games between Canada and the US. And it was amazing. It went so well. We were... We started with 15 people participating. At the end, it was a 10-week competition. At the end of the competition, we were 70 on the line. It was all virtual, of course, but it was so much fun. People were coming with their lunches, and you can see them like in the room, eating lunch and answering questions on their phone. It was just so much fun. So, And that initiative won a prize. So I was being noticed by the company. And... Of course, some of the PMs who were not really agile starting to, started to be not so happy because I was doing well. So fast forward in the story, we're eight months, 10 months in, my projects are going well, I'm delivering, I'm working on three different projects, high visibility projects. Patrick got a promotion, so went up in the company. And one of the PMs, remember the PMs were not so happy that I'm doing so well and changing things, changing you know, uh, the narrative. Uh, one of those got promoted. To PMO director, and he wasn't my biggest fan. Mm. Guess what happens? Three months later, I get fired by that gentleman <laughs> because he asked me a few questions in his mindset as a waterfall PM. He asked me a few questions where I answered, uh, you know what? Um, I think we're focusing on the wrong things. Maybe we should not put so much effort on the output, but more on the outcome, which I think you and I understand. But for him, no, he doesn't doesn't work like that. So, you know, when he's my boss now, so I have to find ways to explain to him, yeah, but where is the value, you know? So we had a few 
altercation. He wasn't happy. I wasn't happy. At the end of the day, I said, you know what? I'm just gonna just gonna go where my values appreciated, you know. So yeah, it was it was a great lesson for me. Yeah, absolutely. First is of course that not every company is ready for agile. True. And sometimes the company is, but some people aren't, and they have the possibility to say no. That's the the first thing that immediately comes to mind. But I want to zone in on on those techniques that you use to get the people excited. So you already shared with us the idea of having this internal competition on agile knowledge, right? The Kahoot. I'll put the link on the show notes. A great tool for Scrum Masters to use, by the way. Great tool for retrospectives, as an example. But also a great tool for trainings. Um, It's fun. It's a fun tool. So... Let's uh, look at those techniques. As you were coming into this company, and as you said, some projects were blocked for months and they were not going anywhere, and you were able to unblock them, right? How did you do it? What were the things you put in place in order to be able to do that? The, the recipe was pretty common for all those projects. First, understand why it's blocked. So that's the first thing. It's blocked. Okay, but why? What's the problem? Is it technological? Is it political? Is it that just we don't have the money anymore? So all these things. So ask questions first. Make the problem transparent. Once you understand what's going on, then we can sit down with the right people to see how can we restart it. So usually it's, it can be a workshop, just um, organizing um, a workshop to rebuild a product backlog or even build a product backlog. So go from a, a Gantt chart or a project plan to an actual product backlog because now we understand the product that is behind the project. Right. So just having those workshops with the right people. So, for example, uh, identifying who is the product owner, who is the customer, who is the end user. A lot of the time, it's those questions seem so simple, but it's unclear. They're going to tell you, oh, we have 15 customers. But no, no, no. Who is really benefiting from this solution? And when you have those answers, it makes a whole difference. So having workshops like story mapping, uh, for example, road mapping understanding the roles and responsibility of each, each other. Why should I act as a Scrum Master and what a Scrum Master is supposed to do? Explain that to the people if they don't understand how Scrum works, uh, what the product owner is supposed to do. Um, do we need the team? Uh, what's, what do we need? Who do we need in our team to work on this project? So uh, I would say simply make things transparent, inspect and adapt in an empirical way, simply. Yeah, this. absolutely. And you said a couple of things there, right? So understand why the project is blocked and then we organize a workshop where we come together on the goal. Maybe the goal is to restart the project. That would be one. And then do whatever it takes, right? So, And then the third thing, get the right people on the workshop. My question is, how did you decide who were the right people? Should I decide who are the right people? Well, there you go. So how did you get to that how did you get to that invite list? I'm getting there because um, sometimes I would know because maybe I'm a subject matter on that project and I understand who I need. But most of the time, it's really engineering and really technical. So I would ask the subject matter expert in place to say, hey, we're trying to build this type of engine. We need to build this type of 3D model, whatever. Who should we work with? And they're going to point me in the right direction and say, yeah, you need Paul, you need Antoine, you need Jessica and whatever. And there we go. We mount the team. Make sure that these people also are interested to work on this thing. Because if they're not engaged, they're not motivated to participate, what's the point? It's not a good start. So sometimes it's me, sometimes it's the others. And and you made a, a point that I want to highlight, which is that at the end of the day, it's the people the team think needs to be there that need to be there. You may have a different view and maybe you invite some other people and that's okay. But the team should be part of deciding who needs to be on that workshop, right? You talked about, so we need to figure out who's the PO, who's the customer, right? And, and if the team isn't part of it, then they won't accept it. Something that's really important uh, in the early stage of the project, the vision. If the vision is clear, if the team is inspired, they're going to go for it. That makes a huge difference. The why behind the project and the product, uh, in my humble experience, have been really important to, to explain to the team. They need to understand why they're putting so much effort in that initiative. Absolutely. Alex, that was a great story. Thank you for sharing it. My pleasure. Leading change is one of the core skills we must acquire, but it is only one of the steps towards our success as Scrum Masters. Tomorrow, on Success Thursday, we will talk about how to define success for the Scrum Master role, we'll cover tips on how to measure your way to that position, 
and most importantly, how to develop that focus on continuous improvement that is as important for Scrum Masters as it is for teams. See you tomorrow. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring. Thank you.